Okay, let's sum up what we um, uh, what we learned last week, and we'll continue this a bit more. And that is, um, we learned in the Ramban that it, um, first and foremost, that even Moshe Rabbeinu uh, needed some kind of experience of, of this cerebral knowledge. He had faith. He had uh, he had a certain definite, profound knowledge of God. Uh, but yet, he needed a, some experiential reality there to feel, make it vivid and real. That's what the Ramban points out, that that's why he, um, uh, he too needed the two miracles which God gave him at the, at the Snet, basically to show that he also needed this chizuk and emuna, which is really profound. I mean, I think we discussed this last week, how with greatest respect, we, uh, we, we all have that problem. We have uh, a definitely a... a, a um, um, uh, I, uh, I, I've said many times, I say our generation looks like Spielberg's E.T. I don't know if you, ever, you would know that. I know, okay. E.T. is this, uh, this, uh, this character from who knows where, you know. I, he looks just like today's human being. He's got a blow, <laughs> I mean, he got a, you know, metaphorically, obviously. You know, we look more like obelisk, if you really want to know. But uh, obesity is the name of the game in the Western world. But uh, we're talking about... Um, uh, it's a blown up head, a mind full of information, right? Information revolution, you all have Wikipedia at your hands. You know, hey, Reish, hey, Gimel means I have a Google. You know what I mean? I mean, you're definitely well informed, etc. You have a lot, you all learn Machshava and Hasidut and all these different nice, cute things that you all know about the Rebbe Limelech, and you go to Heritage and you go cry, sing Rebbe Limelech at, at, at his caper in Lizansk. You do all these things. But, you know, E.T. has a very big blown-up head, but he has a razor-thin neck and an underdeveloped body. I might have thought that's exactly what I see here, a generation full of a lot of PhDs in God knowledge, but nothing has come down, internalized into an emotional knowledge, and therefore their, your, your, your religious body, so to speak, are shriveled, shrunk, and underdeveloped. And you're carrying a heavy weight of, 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 of God knowledge, which is totally meaningless. It's just an overblown head. You're not in proportion of the body. There's no internalization from cerebral intelligence into emotional intelligence. That is a something which I find, uh, oh, it's ETs, guys, all of you. And you're the better part of the deal. I don't want to say what I think about the world around me. I mean, they don't even have an ET head, you know, at least. You know, you've been pumped up with all machshava and all these other nice words. And if shalom okach, if shalom okach, yishem, if shalom armi atav adolam. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of that, all these different, you know, and I read the Marau, of course. I think you're the Golem's cousin. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know what I mean? And I saw the Ramchal. Is that name of a horse in Kentucky? You know what I mean? Or something like that. You have all these names, Chals, and Chals, and Chals, and Chals, and, you know, and Tanya writes, it's Klippos. Right, what's that? Okay, I, mean, I always do this to people. Oh, that's Shalish Klips at Tmes. Right, what are, the name, what are the three? Why not four? You know what I mean? They don't know anything. It's a bunch of cliches. You're stuffed up with knowledge, with no understanding, no wisdom. And ultimately, nothing really sinks down into the emotional psyche. The only thing you do for emotional psyche, you stand up on rooftops and sing Kumbaya, or you go to camp, and you go, wow, and your eyes swoon, and you feel like you're uh, well, Vivian Lee and Clark Gable and, and, and Gone with the Wind. That's the best you're going to get. Or I don't know, Casablanca. Uh, we're talking about old romance. That, that's what your relationship with God is. The cerebral has nothing to do with the emotional because the cerebral doesn't come down. So what you do, you, you supplement with a lot of emotional hype. That's really what we do. Let's be honest. We sing Kumbaya, or the Yisma Chuma Chuzcha Shem Shabbos. I don't know, whatever. They're doing their geriatric shuffle over there uh, after Kabbalah Shabbos. Okay, this is all, this is basically... Uh, supplementing the lack of capability of internalizing uh, wisdom into an emotional intelligence by, okay, that stays stuck up there because your neck equals the capability of translation from the cerebral to the emotional. is really razor thin. This is AET. Like, I don't know, Spielberg's an Ilui to hop this. And if he didn't, I'm telling him, shot. Okay? <laughs> this is a razor thin neck, had nothing to go across. And therefore, so it's your course. What do you do? You have to feel good about yourself, so you take external, like all society takes, if, they, if nothing of value makes them happy, well, there are different um, um, external uh, activities which can cause warmth, feeling, 
etc. I can tell you where to get it if you want. And this is what some people do, you know, this way or that way. And some people sing Yismuchu and dance, and they think that the Hasidic Shtish is getting together and singing and closing your eyes, going back and forth 50 times, and saying Kumbaya, I don't know, Lamancha, or whatever it only be. And you really feel, ah, you feel like you're in a sauna, and you really feel good about yourself, but you didn't lose weight. <laughs> you understand? You're still stuffed up with the nourish. I'm just playing, this is the way it is, okay? And I'm, and I, and I used to be very heavily involved in this, why I get the, once you understand. And I know the reality. Okay, that's the reality. It's very good to age X, but afterwards when you grow up, you've got to grow up. And growing up is, is, is blowing up a mind, but also proportionally growing up a neck and allowing it the, the cerebral intelligence that you're full of. God, this is, my grandmother didn't know what you guys know. Well, I don't talk about my students in Nishmat. They definitely know more than what my mother knew, okay? But the question is, hello, we have to get the neck bigger in order to make the, the intelligence something which becomes vivid, real, not just one of those, you know, how many angels dance on a pin of a needle, which was, it is for most of us, okay? And that's why, yeah, no, that, oh, I know what you do, you grow payas. I know, you know, the big thing is growing payas and having a big beard, you know what I mean? When I see a guy doing that, I ask him, what's the name of the girlfriend he's running away from? Okay, like, are you in penance? What are you doing, giving up for lost time? What, what exactly is the story, okay? Because, you know, you're running away from dealing with the real issue. So here I want you to know that Ramban Tars and Moshe Rabbeinu had the same issue. That's not bad, okay? Moshe Rabbeinu had somewhat of the same issue. He also needed some vivid experience of that awareness. That's what he did. He took the my my which exper he experienced the fact that God defies science by turning water into blood and the nachash. He felt it, saw it, inhaled it. You know what I mean? That's that helped him internalize it. That's what the Rabban writes. It's, a, it's an unbelievable Rabban. I, I just wanted to repeat that. It's so important that even my Rabbeinu needs that. Okay. So we also need that. So the question is, what do we do to help us internalize that information? Okay, that's, that's a serious question. And the answer is quite obvious. The answer is quite obvious. I believe that the more one learns in the science, the more one is, and more experience, not just read science, but experience is nature. You know, I just said, have you guys ever collected rocks? I don't know, have you, uh, have you done anything? Have you, have you, have, did they take you on field trips? I don't know what you did. You grew up in the city. You think that tomatoes grow in... In, 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 in plastic bags, you know, in, in, uh, on the Upper West Side in the supermarket shelf. They actually go on a farm, okay? Um, had you ever been there? For me, upstate New York means Lake George by the hotel. You know, a goise glick, you know what I mean? Thank you very much. I mean, like, you, 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 you had to go to Yagilu, you know, Yalos, whatever it's called, with Tani Prero. He'll take you out in the wilderness and you'll know what it looks like, you know? I'm not joking. I mean, you have to experience nature. B'shashi is born in a odin, but mice of a brew of an ifloim. V'yir b'chachmas he shein lo erch ve'en lo kates. He actually has an emotional experience. Miyadhu oyev or yore. Those are emotional experiences. So the Rabbim clearly points out the way to take your cerebral intelligence into emotional experience by experiencing it first of all through nature. Take your science and experience it. Maybe you should offer your bar mitzvah presents for your children. Don't buy them a safer. Buy them a microscope. Buy them a telescope. Take them to fossils. I can suggest good museums of natural history for them to see, experience, encounter things, touch it and feel it, and wow, what's this? And start talking, okay? In other words, you have to, you want to know how to internalize your religion, it's by experiencing it. So the easiest thing, first and foremost, when you take a young child, he has to experience that. He has to experience it the way a young child, which is not a philosopher, which I hate to say with the word young child, you can be also 20 and be a young child. When you're not developed into a cerebral th thinker yet, so first of all, basic experience should be experience of Chachmosai Yisbarach, the Chachma of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What greater awareness of the Chachma HaKadosh Baruch Hu is that just look in a freaking microscope, take a follicle of hair, now, and then it's to teach you a little bit about cells, Etc. And think of the chachma found there, and that's cool. <laughs> okay, you feel it; it's there. All of a sudden, You suddenly you learn anatomy. You could you, you gotta be dumb not to realize. There's definitely look. The theory of, of of random design for me is not 
logical. Honestly, I'm, I'm into intelligent design. Whether it took 40 billion years or, se or seven days, it doesn't matter to me at the moment. And the reality is, it's definitely intelligently designed, as far as my, sorry, my, my stupid logical mind tells me. Uh, if, 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 if science is based on rational design, so why would I think that science started with random? It's like saying that logic started with pandemonium. Highly illogical. Uh, th therefore, yeah, I understand. I look at intelligence, I say, well, this is cool. That's what the Rama says. That's how you encounter God. You suddenly become an obsessive desire to, philosophy, to understand the profundity of philosophy. That could have been done at the age of 10, 12, 11, till 13 with all of you. It should have been done. So don't do the mistake that people did with you when you have your children. You man, you better start giving them rock collections and leaf collections and telescopes and microscopes and teach them about dinosaurs and about geology and about all the other things. Don't worry about their religion. I'm telling you, this is conducive to religion. Okay? It internalizes Chochmas HaYizboch. It's a Rambam. Not me. I don't do anything. I'm just reading a Rambam. This has to be known. Because it's, it's a Chorban. At the moment, I have kids which have, because all experiences were almost saying, oh, no, no, that's, we don't talk about that because dinosaurs didn't really happen, or whatever it only be, okay, or something like that. Like, science has become an opposition to, uh, to, to, to religion. So all of a sudden, religion has no normal tool of experiencing it and internalizing it outside of closing your eyes and feeling close to God, like I feel close to my toenails. You know what I mean? There is a clear way of internalizing the existence of Chochmah Vakadish Bachu by experiencing it through science and nature. It's frightening. Okay? I mean, you know, I told you I was stuck once in Heathrow Airport, and we were really stuck for hours, and there was this kid there that they, well, he actually is married, lives in Harnuf today. He learned here for three years. Uh, you know, he learned here for three years. I was bored. He was sitting next to me in the lounge. I said, Tell me something intelligent. So the kid talked to me about, uh, about, about formations of crystals. I got an alien. Finally, I finally found someone who's going to tell me something interesting. He said, tell me about Chefz and Gavr. Your Chefz and Gavr doesn't interest me. It's usually not intelligent. OK? Tell me something which is informative and intelligent. He actually did. We, we had a rocking conversation. At the end of it, he ended up here, obviously, in my shear. OK? At the end of the day, why? Did, not because he knew Gemara, because he knew about crystals and, uh, and geology. It was interesting. He had an open mind thinking, oh, I'm going to take this guy. Let me make a human being out of it. It did. The idea is you have to experience this. That's number one. That's the first thing we saw in the Ramban last week. So sometimes you do it through a, metaphor, through a supernatural phenomenon. Moshe Rabbeinu, obviously, through a supernatural phenomenon. Through the Nisim, that's what the Ramban wrote, if you recall. That uh, that's number one. Now, where did we see that? That was the Ramban we quoted over here. The Ramban is source two. When the Ramban wrote, um, he asked, "Why did Moshe Rabbeinu need these two signs?" And he writes, in, in, "It's the second side, which is source two, left column. Um, I would say in the, in the last four lines of, or five lines." Six lines of that, uh, of source number bet. It says, Vulai Afa Pisho di O Hashem Agadol, Shibo Nivra Haolam. He already knew the Shem Yud Kevav. He not just new information, he understood the profundity of what it was, which is something you would take a lifetime to understand. Okay. Uboni Yakol Davar. He understood the source of all the metaphysical realities there. Ratzalar Otoki Boya Se Ototum of Tim Bishunia Tolada. He wanted to show him. How that Yud Kevavka, which you now understand is the source of all, actually is realizing that potential by changing the laws of science. Laman Yitchazek Ha'inyan Belibo Moshe. That's cool, right? That even that he, why God wanted the great Navi, which had the tremendous idea of being the Vua Afal Pikain, Lechazek Es Adover Azer Yitzel Moshe. You know what that is? With 150 Kavachemers, we need a bigger Chizek than that. If I had his idea, I would think, no, but I'll give Moshe Rabbeinu a Novi. God is his Rebbe, for goodness sake. Not for the Chobma Chizuk. One would have thought that that should, and the answer is, no, it's not true. Even a Novi can have information which can stay cerebral, which does not come down totally into the emotion. It's not Chazuk. The Lushan is, the Be'emes. What does Be'emes mean? What do you think? The guy's lying? 
What does it mean, MS? Because MS doesn't just mean truth. MS means absolute, muchlat. There's no other way out. You know, and there's, you know, I know things cerebrally, but if I don't experience it, so in my, in, my, in my imagination, yeah, it's a truth, but you know, maybe there's something else. Also, MS means it's there forever and never walks away from me. I mentioned that many a time. When it says, a mayon ha if we talk about, in Mishnah and Porah, we talk about a fountain of well, which is not consistent, which is not there forever. It's mechazev. It's called, it's, it's sporadic. Something which spread is called kozov. And the flips, a flip of a, a, a sporadic is consistent. That's called, the opposite of kozov is called emes. That's why we say, Megillah uh, Tzricha Sirtut, Ke Amita Shel Torah. Why is it called Ke Amita Shel Torah? Because Torah's Torah is never going to be bottled. Kisvi HaKodesh, the status of the Vim and Suvim are not going to, is it going to be bottled? Before Shirambam, right? About Yerushalmi, the last Ram Hichas Megillah, called Kisvi HaKodesh, Asidim Li Botel, their, their Kedusha will, will finish. What will stay forever? Chamisha Chumshu Torah and Torah Shemel Ped. That's called Emes. So they are, so to speak, cause of, and this is the Maisa Emes, Ka'amita Shotayra, Kipshutay. That's the Lashon of the Gemara and Megillah. Okay? In the Ramam, the Frankel's Gersi doesn't have Amita Shotayra, it says Katayra Atzma, Kesefer Tayra Atzma. The Lashon of the Ramam is Katayra Atzma, and the, uh, and, uh, 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 but, the, but in the Frankel's Ramam, which is very important because the son does a briskerov, it's not Katayra Atzma, it's Kesefer Tayra Atzma. Just remember that, which is the Gersi Am Sukenis. This undermines a lot of shtikl Torah. That's why I didn't mention what we did to Sugi, because I thought it was wrong. Okay? Because that's stuck in the emis. If the gear says kasei for Torah, that's why the whole shtikl Torah falls apart, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but uh, that's the way it happens. Okay, so if that's the truth, so that shtikl, you don't make a bichs of Torah on anymore. You realize that. It's gone. It's, uh, it was nice. Nice try. Didn't work, like a lot of the stuff. Okay, anyway, at the end of the day, but the Dumar says the Lashon Ka'amita Shel Torah. Now, if it means the Sefer Torah, what does it mean, Amita Shotayra? It means he has a Din Sirtu, which is Ma'akiv, that's by Sefer Torah, as opposed to Ksuvim. <laughs> Sirtu is Ma'akiv and Ksuvim. That Mechuiv, Medin Megillah, Medin is the Sefer of Megillah. Ksuvim, because there's a lot of Kisri to have to be Kosovo, but it's not a Din of the Sefer Torah. This is a Din of the Sefer Torah, so Megillah, it's a Din Sefer, and needs a Sirtu. That's the Pashist of that Gemara, uh, of that Gemara and um, um, whatever was written in Chidu Shariz, let it be. That's what he said. That's called Vieda Be'emes. He, he knows it not sporadically, not inspiration, not it went up and down. It stuck forever. It's, it's the way you see things. See, it, it became your paradigm. That's how he sees it. Nothing's changed. It's, it's there. It, it's no more belief or just cerebral. That, that, that's how your eyes see things. He gave you lenses. That's why it's called Vieda Be'emes. Vitaili Be'enu Be'avtacha Be'emes means what? Uh, we, like we, 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 I know we're a bunch of fakers. Let's try to do it sincerely. Is that what it means? No, that's not what it means. La'avdach ba'emes means consistently and always. Mukhlat. Rambam, yuchsi soydi atayra, perik alaf, halacha, beiz or gimel when he describes that concept. Absolute existent. We discussed this once. I mentioned a chinuch in Bashish Yisrael, on Leisis Hashem Ashrav. You should look it up. Machnis, it's atzboi lemechitzes ha'emes. Lashon of the of the chinuch. Person which makes a shvua, he's putting himself in the realm of absolute existence. A very important lashon of, of the Sefer Achinuch and on the Lisa of Loisis Hashem Meshav. Look it up. Uh, these are things that we mentioned in class, so I'm like uh, making it a bit short. So at the end of the day, that's what it means. You want to know it, that becomes the way you see things, not just you believe or you know. You have to experience them, even my Shabbat. And then he continues, says, that's one thing. So he says, a Daila Lamoisha Bishneosos. For him, it's enough to have two oysters. Not bad, <laughs> okay? But that means, but Moshe Rabbeinu needs two oysters. Because Moshe doesn't do nisim because he's into showing tricks. It was needed for Moshe to get to the darga of Yediya Ba'emis. He needed two oysters. He himself needed to experience this reality of Yudke Vavke, which is Mishan Esatev. He had to see it, feel it, touch it. His frame was enough too. For us, I hate to say how much we need. So now, how do we do this to know what we need? So that's what we pointed out in the first Ramban, in the first page, where he describes that the idea behind it was, as we pointed out, the idea behind it was that tefillah is something which will uh, allow us to understand uh, and to internalize our, 
our 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 uh, our emuna. And this is the Ramban in uh, Gimel Yud Gimel, the long Ramban, where he wrote um, in the left column again, the second paragraph. I will be that which I will be. There used to be an old song, Ketch Sarah Sarah. What will be, will be. I'm there. Okay? Now, I don't, I told you, I don't want to cook up this Afilu Bastora song because I don't think that that's a Megala Punimbir of Nachman Shalei Kalacha. But, 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 Lamaisa, Eye, 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 that's a Chazal, so I don't need your Nachman Bresler or that. It's the Medrash on the spot. I will be with you in all your service. Okay, so if you want to make a song, don't write a filibustora, because that's pretty bad. Say, ekasha, eke. No, find out a nigm for it. Ask some chassid shi'id in Williamsburg, they'll figure it out, and they'll make a song. That's the, uh, that's the mucker. So it says, Eye imchem b'tzorah zu, ve'ye imchem b'tzorot acherot. Amar lefanav ribono shel olam, dayo l'tzorah b'shaita, amar lo yafa amarta. Well, I'm supposed to tell them there's going to be more tzorahs. He says, who am, who are you, God? Oh, I'm the guy that's always going to be with you in all, your, in, all your, in all your troubles. What, you want me to tell them now that there's going to be more troubles? They're at the moment thinking, as soon as we're redeemed, we have shiny faces and we have Colgate, I don't know, teeth, and we look good and we'll be smiling all day. No, God says, don't worry about it. You're redeemed now. You're going to fall soon. Don't worry about it, okay? God's practical. And Moshe says, listen, don't tell them these things at the moment. Like, you don't tell a little kid, you understand you're going to fail. Okay, make him feel good. He'll fail. Don't worry about it. And then you have to pick him up again. But to promise it, to, to put it in your face, okay, I want to talk, you know, get married and say, love you, uh, let's get married. But you have to understand, we're going to fight every three months, and you're probably, you're probably going to want to go home. Um, do me a favor, let's decide that we um, um, uh, don't pack the suitcase. Can you imagine doing this while you're proposing? Describing, you know, the, the different rules and, and how you interact in a married life. It's not all rosy. That's goodness sakes. That's what they do. They drug you up for Shemarbach's the meal that everything is like, ah. Brother, you wake up in the jingle jangle morning that comes after. You say, hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, where am I? You know what I mean? Like, what's this all about? You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, then you live and learn. And all of a sudden, it becomes the greatest thing. And I can tell you now, okay, 45 years of marriage, the best thing I've done in my life. There couldn't be anything better. Okay? It was the best and most important thing and decision I ever made in my life. And the, really, God, man, super investment. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, uh, it, unbelievable. But you know, don't think for one minute it was all, hey, it doesn't work that way. We're human beings. Human beings have, you know, I told you, we have to learn how to clean our edges, our surfaces, until finally internalize the, the glue between you and ultimately become one. It takes, it, it's not, you need seichel, by the way. I do suggest uh, you, you need seichel. Without that, it's not going to happen. Behemoths don't have seichel, so they don't have a mishpacha. It's like neither do horses. They meet together, have a little fun, and leave, right? About seichel, that's something else. So this is a big yisait. I have to understand that. So he says, You have to tell them now there's going to be tzoros later. Relax, now we're proposing. I'm introducing you to them. Remember, they were without you for 210 years. So the Ramban, Give me something. I need inf philosophical information which will totally introduce them into the fact that there's a one God which is the source of it all and not just that, but he also intervenes and, and looks into the world. Metzius and Ashgacha. So what does he say to them? What do they need more philosophical rayas? You know the biggest raya? He cares. He's always going to be there with you. Why? You You know, if they really cry for real, I'll be there. You know, I always people ask, I prayed, it didn't work. You know, I talk about your prayer. I told you last week, yeah, you know, you davened, you know, what's the yadavant? Did you clean the surfaces? You know, before you, tefillah ba'amis means you first did tshuva. Does anybody in this room ever do tshuva? I know we talk about tshuva, you know, we do tshuva? Mama changed? It's wow, I wish it'd be true. You know, I think only non religious Jews do tshuva. Religious Jews don't repent, they're sorry. <laughs> Yeah, they repent. They don't go through a major metamorphosis of change of personality. They don't have a paradigm switch. I hate to say it. 
And we explained this once. Reb Nachman says the reason is because they, they, they're too scared to look into their private cesspools to analyze their chisreinus. They're scared. They're not sure of themselves. They're not happy. Therefore, no one's going to look into and undermine the, the, the complacency of your ego of feeling good about yourself, because if you do without a sense of happiness, you will blow your mind and you will go into depression. It's dangerous. To really do vidui is a super dangerous, psychologically crazy. People need to have a sense of comfort in order to exist. That's how we were created, okay? You expect me to uproot my comfort zone totally, to an objective assessment of the cesspool, which is my heart? You, you, you got to be out of your freaking mind. So how does God want me to do this? <coughs> So God first wants you to be a happy person. That's the cloud God Rabbi Nachman says. First, have a healthy sense of confidence. First, appreciate the good things that you are and you have, and everybody has something. And without that, don't even begin this. All this cutting into yourself, mm, do me a favor, the Navaricus can do it. You, you first be happy. Now, not artificially happy, woohoo, kumbaya, my lord, and all. No, it means be appreciate, analyze your, 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 your positive aspects, and everybody here knows that he has something special and unique, and really bask in it, love it. He says, hey, just be cool, you're Jewish, man, that's really something. Is it? Well, we're just born with it, I just took it for granted. That's why Messiah will not be coming from a family of regular Jews. It could be from converts. Because converts appreciate their Judaism. They worked for it. You're born in it. Big deal. Who are you? Mashiach has to come from David, which is the children of Rus. You understand? You have to appreciate what you have. If you appreciate what you have, you're really happy. It's a schus gadol to be a member of this club. It's unbelievable. Fibet de Kappa. You know, it's like you're, you're an unbelievable club. You got a hell of a lot of work, <laughs> okay? You know, you're in the Marines, and God decided you're going to be in the Marines. Well, he's a pretty good, you know, uh, CO, and uh, he calls the shots. Commanding officer says you're in the Marines. Hi, would you mean it? You poor kid. Yeah, I want my neighbor to be the Marines. I want to be behind a desk, you know, and you uh, know, and pull up turnips or something like that. <laughs> and that's what you say. But yatava chatanah means you were chosen for a heavy job. A low body, you know, between you want to work hard. You know, okay. Who wants to work hard? Okay. No, you gotta be very happy you're working hard. You'll be very you'll be super appreciating that reality. Rabbi Nachman writes this. If you would only appreciate Judaism and what it really means in the broad picture, not some kind of a racist or, 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 or thing like that. No, appreciate the responsibilities, the potential, uh, the job. Uh, the, in the broad face of history, what is your place or what is the place of this nation and understand, wow, well, think this little nation, which is a pain in the, um, um, a thorn in the side of most, most of humanity, has so, uh, unbelievably, because of it and through it, through its cousins or whatever it only be, has changed the face of, of culture. We are basically a monotheistic world. The Western world is heavily monotheistic. We were all pagans, remember us? And you know, the Bible, at the end of the day, is, the, is still the first, the, the bestseller of the, of the Western world, which is really interesting, okay? Uh, which is, I remember the Beatles, you said, no, we're, we're more important than the Bible. I remember there was a whole scandal, to say, they were, because they are, their, their sales, the Chathila, were more than the Bible that week. Okay, so it was, it was Abbey Road, whatever, which the album was over there. So you know what I mean? Nah, garnished. It's unbelievable. You know, that's very important. It also means you have such a heavy responsibility that if you shirk from your responsibility, you're a deserter. You may be moving the world south instead of north. It's a frightening responsibility, but it's really, you should be young. Chayalim almonim hinenu belim madim mishura mishacharet rakamavet. I don't know if you know what that is. That is the anthem of the Irgun. Anonymous soldiers, we have no uniforms, and you can't check out. <laughs> We're in, and uh, death is the, what releases us from conscription. Are we getting that straight? It's very Jewish. Okay, that's what you are. Feel that, and then, so then you can start doing tshuva. Feel that and be proud of it. Then you can be ha happy, and then you can start looking at, okay, now, we have to, since I'm a soldier, and I'm really so important, so I have to make sure that all my machinery is, you know, is, up, is, is works. So I guess you have to clean all your stuff, so you've got to look see what's greasy or not. 
You have to understand. Yeah, then you have to start. Then you can look into things. It's a very big yisaid. Reb Nachman writes. Tshuva can only be done mitayich simcha, mitayich bitachin. You have to be like, happy with yourself. That's what Reb Nachman writes. And it's an unbelievable thing to remember because I really think that most people don't really do tshuva. They spend forty days a year playing lip service to it, and all the different machshava things. This uh, Reb Lezer ben Derdaya did tshuva. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Right, yeah, well, he had to go through major trauma to do tshuva. Well, if you, you know, when you're end of the rope, that's what happens. I'm telling you, when do you th th then you do tshuva because there's no, there's, no, there's no going down. It's either death or up. So I guess you try to go up, okay? Because you realize you're a waste of space and the oxygen is baltashkis on you. But if you don't feel that way, and you shouldn't feel that way before you have a sense of existence, because if you're just going to feel that, you'll be a depressed animal, you, you'll die. You know, it's not, it's not going to happen. You have healthy mechanisms to protect you from such depression. Thank God, I hope. And if you don't, well, better see a doctor. This is a reality. I want us to understand this. So he says, but if you do do it right, and you do die, and God does answer. Didn't we learn that in the Ramban? Lo yasur mitzadik einav, a person which really thinks lives in God awareness, God protects him even from mikrim, from regular occurrences. So this is the biggest raya for Ashgacha and for Metzias, that if you pray, it works. If you pray correctly. And that's what he writes. They will call, I will answer. And this is the raya on Metzius Hashem and Ashgachasai. But who are raya gdola? Sheyesh elokim be Yisrael krovim elav bechol kareinu elav. Viesh elohim shoftim ba'aretz. At kan divrei Ramban. So we clearly saw here that tefillah is a is is is, is a way of internalizing uh, cerebral faith, experiencing it. Because the fact when you pray, you get an answer. That's what the Ramban writes. I took that to somewhere else. The idea that prayer is an exercise in internalizing the vividness of God awareness is seen in multiple places in tefillah, and I'm going to show you a few of them at the moment. Start with the, uh, as we pointed out, the Ramam says in Hukha's tefillah, we have that in source, it's too fast, I want to do all of this today. Uh, in source Gimel, where it says, uh, oh, again, as I remember, I had missed this, I'll say, Bel Peh. Source Gimel, Chamish Dvar Ma'akim Vesat Tefillah, it's Ma'akim Vesat Tefillah, Afo Pi, Shegi Azmano, even if time came, but if you didn't do these three things, your tefillah is not a tefillah. What are they? First of all, tyrus yadayim, which I explained at length of what that meant. Okay, kisoy ever I also explained. And now the last one is tyrus makam at tefillah. It has to be an appropriate place. And what's it in? V'dvar ma'chayv zimoyisoy. If there are things which force you to daven fast. <laughs> Should I tell you how many things? I told you, Minchem Manhattan is definitely a matzav of dvar ma'chayv zimoyisoy. Okay, okay. Or if you, the word describes if you're in a, you're, you're like you're climbing, you're, you're a painter, you're you're in the middle of work, so you're on the scaffolding. So okay, you do a fast one the esrei, you know the type. Or you're you you you're about to run off. I got two minutes. Okay, I'll do one of these. Uh, I'll send an email to God. That type. That makavs at tefillah. Don't do it, because it's not tefillah anyway. He says and kavana salev. The Raman describes in the, in the next in the fifth halacha over there. What is, uh, what is the concept of Kavan Saleh? In Tazayin, he says, what is it? It's, it's not here. It's the halacha of, you have to oimet shechina, oimet, he's standing mula shechina. You're standing mula shechina. Now, I'm going to give you an example of halachas for that. You're standing mula shechina. What does that mean to you? Now, it's ma'akev. That means every person in this room, when he davens shechina, right? He has to contemplate that he's standing mula shechina. What does shechina mean? Shechina means to say that expression of God which, which we experience in our lives. The God which you see in science, that you can definitely point out and see him, is Chachma. That God of creation, the God of nature, the God which you somehow uh, think or feel or believe that you are accountable to, Schar and Einish. The God which calls the shots, okay, it's called Ashgacha. All that's called Shechina. Yudke Vavke is the name of God, source of the primary infinite source of all that. Shechina is shochein, he resides. That means it's experiential. You must experience God through nature, hashgacha, schar v'oynish. And that's how you daven too. Baruch atah Hashem elokeinu melech 
Okay, you said you. That means you know him. The Rajba and Chuva writes, why is it in Birch Samitzvos we have a we have a neurosis? We start Baruch Hashem, okay? You, okay? Then you say Elokeinu, Asher Kiddishanu. That what's Kiddishanu? That's third person. It should say Asher Kiddashtanu. Secha. You started with Baruch Ata. You should end Asher Kiddashtanu b'Mitzvay Secha. And all of a sudden you said Asher Kiddishanu b'Mitzvay Sav. You're talking to me, and now you're talking about someone. Who, uh, uh, you have two gods. Well, maybe possibility. So what are we going to say? What are you going to say? So the Rajba asked the question. Rajba asked the question in Shubh Rajba, and he says, Kaddish Baruch Hu is Nister Batsmiusai and Nigla B'maisof. So the God that I know, straight I can talk to you second, first person, Ata, that's one is Nigla B'maisof. I know what you do. You're Shekhinah. You're the God of science, the God of, uh, you know, you're the God that, my, 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 I don't know, you, you, you do, my, 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 I read all of Pesukah to Zimra, I read all about the God, which, Mashlech Kacha Kefitim, Vei Karosa Mi Yamod, Yishlech Vorav Yamsem, Yashen Rucho Yizdum Oim. Maybe you should read Baruch Nafshi, it's coming up next week. You should read it before B'Yu and to understand, wow, it's really cool, it's a great celebration. You have to go to Kruger Park and experience Baruch Nafshi. You're never going to experience it in the, in the Upper West Side, or the Upper East Side. <laughs> that there's uh, tomatoes or apples that they shine up full of wax and they have no taste. You got to go to nature, okay? I always felt it, man. It's Kule Sheker, that whole place, you know. Uh, I don't believe I see this. It's beautiful fruit. So I bought well, once an apple over there on Broadway. I t it tasted like wax. There was no taste to it. And they just saw the fruit don't look good. But they're juicy. They're like the real thing, you know what I mean? In America, the real thing is Coca-Cola, you know what I mean? That's all the real thing. There's no real thing. That's Kuli Shekever This, at least, that you saw, you know, the fruit is fruit. I know what it is. You know, you want to get a good drink, you go to South Africa, you read Seri's uh, fruit juices, okay? Thus, is that good? Ich verstehe. It's fruit. Okay, in America, more the Kulama, the best you get is Tropicana, or, or, or what's it called, Golden Flow, or something like that, the Square Orange Juice. <laughs> right, Square Orange Juice. I didn't know they had oranges in Square. Okay, but whatever, you know what I mean, that's what you guys get. You have to, and they stick it with sugar, whatever it is. You know, these Americana, Kule Chitsonius, and it's not, it's not, you're not touching nature, and running away from nature is running away from God. Because nature is a tool of understanding God. And we taught that many a time. Um, um, the Barbanel explains, I remember teaching this to you, that one of the problems of Dora Palaga was because they were walking away from agrarian society and want to live in an urban sprawl. And he thought going away from agrarian society or urban sprawl is walking away from one of the major, most conducive t tools, which is most conducive to God awareness. When you're a farmer, believe me, you start praying for rain. <laughs> If not, you send a telegram to the Ada Haredes that they should do the rain dance for you. You know what I mean? Or get some local Indian or do a divining. Right? You'll find all. You, you, also, you, you understand the limitations of man and you start believing in something. Okay? When you grew up, you know, when you grew up in a, 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 on a Lakeshore Drive in Chicago, you didn't need that. You understand? So that's what the Abarbanel writes. Running away from nature is running away from a great tool of God awareness. A society which wants to run away from nature is a society which wants to run away from God awareness. Makes a lot of sense. Just think of it. Okay, this is the way Allah sees these things. So when we're talking about kavana, you have to be have a kavana, your oimid lifne ashkina. You should be sitting down thinking for hours, what's my shkina to you? And your shkina is not my shkina, your experiences of life are not mine. You have to see what is it. Where did you experience Shekhinah? Because that's what you're standing in front of in Tefillah. Once took a group of guys, wherever we were in Vermont for Shabbos, we, we, we had little vapors in our minds. It was a very good tish, suit of Shabbos with a lot of, you know, like, uh, whatever, uh, a lot of Harchavah uh, Sadas. So it was a bit, so we, so we went outside, it was freezing outside, and I decided, you know, showing the guys the constellations, and I suddenly realized New Yorkers don't know what stars look like. It was frightening. 
I'm trying to show the big dipper, the little dipper, you know, the whole the says, so, where are you guys from? From Brooklyn? Like, like, like for Stainish? No! They're from, they don't know. Don't you understand the Chachma to see the beauty of nature? It's, a, it's, it's so enriching and it, it, you're missing it. You guys really have to go near Masad in the desert or Teshrimon. Sleep there for two nights. Really? I think I'm joking. I think it'd be Chachana for Elul. Okay, maybe she's <laughs> I'm not on the show. It would be nice taking it for Elul, okay? You know what I mean? Sleep in the desert and have someone teach you the, the, the stars are beautiful there. That's where the planetarium is in, in this country. In, 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 in Ramon, uh, you probably know, right? You don't know. It doesn't matter, okay? It's uh, Ramon. That's where the uh, that's where our planetarium is, our national planetarium. It's unbelievable. You poor guys, you, you know about these things. How, you're missing tools. And but you have to have all that to say what your covenant for Davani is. I, when I said Shechina, I think about the God I saw in the stars, the God I saw under the microscope, the God I experienced in my crazy whirlwind of life. Believe me, you met a lot of interesting people in through life, and a lot of interesting, you know, smelled a lot of things, experienced a lot of things, and all of that is for me, Shechina. So if everyone has to have his own understanding of Shechina. You can't, it, it, it's not like Shechina, God, that resides, that's cerebral, you freaking idiot. You stand in front of an idea, that's a Sheker. Standing in front of is an experiential reality. So what are you standing in front of? What are you in front of? What is the presence that you are experiencing? It can only be subjective. There's no way, there's no off-the-rack reality for this. It makes, it's, 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 it's shekin. You want a shekin zuntahit, you know what I mean? You want to lie. We, both people do anyway. But we know that we learned the Rashi and Yuma, what the God hates liars. Especially by davening, right? That's what the Gemara says. Yoides Rebbeinu, he's saying the Shekah, who God doesn't like you to lie to him. You know what I mean? Do me a favor. Don't tell me I'm a God of Venoira if you don't really think so. <laughs> the Gemara says. That's why after the Chorban, the first Chorban, the Nevi'im stopped saying God of Gibber Venoira because they, 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 they believed it but they didn't understand it and they didn't experience it and they knew God doesn't want them to praise him with things they don't really, can't really see. They stopped saying it. Until the business of Mordechai Vester, that's almost 70 years. They didn't say, Go to Gibber Venaira. That's frightening. <coughs> Rashi, because they knew the Kishbok hates Sheker. But you're Mechui of Alpidin for Kavana Lifne Ashkina. What does that mean for you? I don't know. Shechina. So you know, right, I can see this ready on the big board. Shechina. Here, I'm in front of it. Okay? There was once a retreat, you know, I had in the Kaint, it doesn't matter. He was a. Um, uh, much older than me, uh, but I had met him twice. Very interesting man. Uh, um, uh, he was the father of the uh, of a new age reality in Judaism. Uh, he had to do with the Reconstructionist movement uh, in Philadelphia. His name was uh, Dr. Zalman Shechter, Shalom Shechter. Very interesting guy. Without going into it, he was the, one of the first shluchim of Lubavitcher Rebbe way back then to the campuses. But then he went off and created his own world. We we will. Good read about the guy if you want. Go to, um, uh, yeah, there's a great book called The Jew and the Lotus, L-O-T-U-S, written by Roger Kamenetz. Uh, he's stars in the book. That's a bunch of Jews got together to have a dialogue with the Dalai Lama, which is really a good book, okay? And uh, I picked it up in Memphis one year because some people knew that I was looking for it. Interesting, I had one of their children that I knew from my brinos. They never came to give away with the gush. But, uh, but they knew that I was, uh, I was looking for the book. I came to Memphis and, hey, Rabbi, this is for you. So I said, wow, you know, that's like a of pitkin mishamaya. I got something from heaven. Great read. I suggest it for those who are um, ashtikul balidas. Uh, there's another book called Stalking Elijah, but we're going to let that one go. So this is, um, this is uh, you know, I'm trying to enhance your, your cultural world. Try to figure out where I'm coming from. <laughs> you never figure that out. Uh, this colors my tasteless. You don't hop. This is all this also colors how I see a black gemara, how I say a svari. I don't know what in uh, in Otsitz <laughs> or on the other hand, how I read Tanakh to try to understand where the gvulos are, etc. Yeah, 
you, everything colors everything. You think for one minute that, that, that rock formations don't color the way you understand the shot in, in, in the Gersa Kodesh or the Balatanya. You, you don't hop. Oh, does it? You don't understand how much it does, how everything is connected and everything colors everything. It's the honest truth. Just you don't walk like a crazy man, you know, like a kid going into Toys R Us. <laughs> Hop, no, no. First run, 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 aisle, the next aisle, the next aisle, the next. There's a lot of aisles. Okay? You got to finish the store, okay? But you start in a systematic order. You know, some of these kids jump to aisle, you know, I'm doing one in aisle one, go to aisle seven, go back to aisle six. <laughs> nothing. Waste of time, it's nothing more than narcissism. You want to feel good about yourself, so you want to feel accomplished, it's garnished. Meaningless activity. I'm telling you right now. Book after book after book book. Put a lot of books. Okay, you know what I mean? Book, 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 Start reading, okay? Read, read a book. Shas, it's 20 freaking volumes. That's all it is, okay? And the Britannica is bigger, for goodness sakes. 20 volumes, that's all it is, okay? Finish it! Okay, how big is Shulchan Aruch, for goodness sakes? I think it's, what's Ramba? Five Krachen. Forget the guys at the sides in the beginning, just the guy in the middle. Okay, you don't understand this. It's, it's, it's crazy. You have no musagim, you know, like a do 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 Year after year after year after year after year, each year you're kind of another safer. One year you learn Maravuchim, next year you learn Ramchal, next year you learn, I don't know what, Sefer Ikrim. It takes two years, so two years you plan to die tomorrow. There's no cheskes shema yomus la alta loy chashinon. I don't understand. You have a cheskes chaim, so plan for 20 years. What's the problem? Okay, plan for 20 years and get the freaking thing done. I don't understand. It's got to stop. Because who else is going to be, who else is going to teach Torah for, the, for generations further? A bunch of guys that know three midrash and say maybe it is possible. What are you going to do? My, what's going to be God's Torah and what's going to be God's Yiddishkeit? It's a frightening experience. I'm saying it right now because I'm hurting. My, yeah, what's going what's to be with Kodesh Bochon and his Torah? If it's so low, uh, there's no Amalot Torah. There's no any more Yiddish Torah. It's like frightening because there's no Seder. You have to page after page, book after book, and just get it done. You may be a top-notch lawyer, doctor, scientist, I don't know, engineer, but it doesn't mean you don't have time to continue learning. I don't know how long it takes, I've seen it. Well, be an actuary, you'll have more time. But uh, there's, a, there's no reason, that instead of uh, just make your priorities, no reason that you can't, in all truth, put away a nice amount of hours at a weekly basis. Uh, it's just like when you're in certain yeshivas, where people think that uh, June's man is an optional and the Zman ends in May. I hate to tell it to you, the, uh, the, the year is 52 weeks. It's not 24 or 22 of the academic calendar. Which means to say, let's say you're doing multidiscipline in YU, for example, so for 22 weeks, you, you have to uh, test. 22 weeks, you're multidiscipline, right, which really means you're limited. But brother dear, there's another freaking 30 weeks there that you can pile in 15 hours a day of Lima on Tyra. You don't have to save the whales. No one tells you to be, uh, you know, to go to build hospitals in Togo. And I don't mind if you don't decide to, uh, you know, to be Makar of the, uh, this and that. Do me a favor. You know, pure charity starts at home. Okay? First become inspired, intelligent human beings. So that means to say your formative years uh, we all know that once you become professionals, you won't be doing all this volunteering. <laughs> you have no time. You only, no, obviously, you have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, you're a very free man. You do whatever you want with your time. So you volunteer, you save the whales. Will the whale is waiting for you. Or I don't know what. You're going to build hospitals in Togo. I says you will do the Peace Corps. You'll do so many important things. The one thing you won't do, you won't learn. Don't you understand that those formative years, that's what you're supposed to be doing? 
And afterwards, if you do it well, then when you're a lawyer, instead of saying you have six weeks vacation, so two weeks, three weeks, you'll set aside to volunteer for Kali Yisrael, and three weeks you do mountain climbing in Nepal, for all I know, if that's what you want to do, or, 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 or fishing in Montana. Uh, it's okay with me. I have no problem. Do what you want to do, unless you want to play golf. Uh, for that, you go to Maryland. But uh, really, uh, I don't understand. What do you guys, where, 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 where's, the, where's the dreams of growing uh, in Tyre and your Shemaim and ultimately changing the face of the world and creating a better world around you? How will you ever be equipped? I hate to say this, I should be doing this on a Friday night, but I'm not here for Friday night so long, so I'm killing you guys now about this. But it's the truth. It's the terrible truth. This is the honest truth. So when we talk about this, understand one thing. That's all that is Shekhinah. All that, with all that you should be doing, that's what you're supposed to be thinking before you daven. And that's ma'akiv and tefillah. Do you understand what that means? That means if you didn't really think of who you're standing, my, who? God. Why'd you call him God? Call him Frankenstein. What does it mean, God? What do you mean? Who's God? God is God. Yeah, I know that. What does that mean to you? You know, I told you the story, okay? They think the guy's God. Guy can't be God. God is God. It's like that, that gas station attendant on the Palisades. That, that, you read the story? You thought, yeah. There ain't no son of God, man. God is God. Yeah, but who's God? What are you talking about? What does God mean to you? That, oh, I don't know. You know, this old guy up there on the throne, it says God on it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? It's supposed to be It's a kavan of oymid lifnei ashkin of us maintas. I'm trying to think what people think. What do you think when you go to the hotel? Would you believe it? Those rocks are marble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that, that you didn't think. Okay. Like, what are you thinking about? That you close my eyes and you say to them, "Okay, and now what?" I'm, I'm trying to understand. Do you have a kavana of what you're standing in front of? These so many alachas which deal with that, that the alachas had to get dressed in your room. Bedarkate sneers. Why? Because if you experience experientially that you're standing in front of the Shekhinah, you somehow have a certain decorum and you're going to not just walk around in your speedos. Okay? You're going to somehow be more tsunua about things. What's that for? Those halachas are to internalize, again, to experience those are experience. Those are, all those halachas are chinuch to internalize the ideas that your, 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 spirit, your ET mind is there to, 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 to broaden out the throat. That's what it's for. That's the halachas of how to get dressed in the morning. Okay? Let's look at other halachas. Some of them are quite frightening. I'm going to show some gemaras here. Read the Gemara of Chof, the source Dalit. This is the source of what I just said now. Tan Rabbanon, Kishachala Rabbi Liezer, Nichzu Tamid of Levakroi. Omla Rabbeinu, Limatana Orchis Chaim, teach us the, the road of life. Venis Kibem Lechayo Lemaba. You understand who we're talking about? These are Tamidiata, Tanoim. I don't know, they were all a royal Eroash, I can't call them Tanoim. But the Talmudim of the Tana of Lezer. And what? They ask him, give us the key to life, man. We should all get to Elam Haba, where you've been until now, you know, into Santa. So there's got to be one trick. What, what does it mean? It means to say, look, we know a lot of things. Give us basics that we can focus on. Because we're doing so many things, but we're not focused. Give us something we can focus on, and through that we'll be Niskil Chai Elam Haba. So when he says, Omelem, he zarubik fod chavrechem. First of all, honor each other. It means respect differences. The truth is not in anybody's pocket. There's no monopoly on that. Most of, even theology is open to human interpretation, therefore, kishem shem patsufem shavos kachem deosem shavos. It's not my way or the highway anywhere. That's something which is very important. A major issue in Yiddishkeit, okay? Number two. Keep your children. Now, Rashi says, don't learn Tanakh. (laughs) 
that's heavy understanding. But the posh is what does it really mean? I mean, leave young children away from philosophizing. They're young. Ramam writes at length how that very few people are worthy of entering the world of profound philosophy. They shouldn't go near it until they are bucky and call advice to buy Virava. Rama writes it before and Perry Dadled First, no shots. Then uh, he expects you. Rama thinks that if you just know shots, you don't go further into profundity of sciences and, and philosophy, etc. You're not an other mashale. Rama writes it clearly. But olive base not missed in shots. That's olive base. The rabbi writes in the Agdama, before anybody goes into the philosophy, he must have a very strong sense of connection to his religion. You have to be very, intel very informed and also very profoundly religious. Then he says, yeah, of course, what else are you going to do? Of course, that's the next stage of development, which is, that's how the Raman puts it. If you read the Agdama of the Marina Vuchem and also Peri Dalit, you saw the Atar, I think I mentioned it once. Good. So he says, take the children away from them. You know, they, 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 what does that mean? Oh, the little learning machshava, tumachatayva ataisvis. I'll never forget. You know what? We push this into my mind. I'll never forget this. My father's friend, the You know, we were davening in Shul. Shul was called Bnei Ruben. It's in Chicago. And, uh, you know, my dad used to sit like, you know, it wasn't the rub of the Shul. He had other, he, we used to sit like not far from the Mizrach. And, and this guy comes, I want to say who, I actually remember, and he said this unbelievable, beautiful drusha with all the... And my father sees me salivating, enjoying it, so he gives me a hit in the ribs. Mendel, it's a teisvus kumtus nisht. Very nice, it doesn't come to a teisvus. Just remember that. That's, that was one of those, you know, that, that's real education, you know what I mean? Very sweet. Satoshis kumtus nisht. That's the cloud. Okay? That's minu b'deichem inei goyoin. First, no your toisvus. That's the big yisoit. Vaita. If you understand well, you hap how all nigla is the biggest source for nister. I mean, the, the beauty of the Ramban is that, if you know how to see it, but you have to know something. But the... Uh, the Raman said you're supposed to learn your values from the Allahs. You're supposed to be able to philosophize the Allahs and take out the kernel of value and ideals from it. You can't know it before you know all the Allahs, and, and that doesn't mean reading Mishnah Brura, it means knowing Shas to be able to write the Allahs. <laughs> okay? So you have to know all that. That's a Mufurshi Ramban in, in Veschanon. But she says, a Yoshev is a Taif. How do you know it? By knowing the Allahs. So then he says, Make sure you send your children to be tutored or to sit amongst scholars, the world of scholarship. That's the world that they should be having. Another thing I heard from my father, which is the same thing. He once told me, you know, the Maram says, always says, Makshin Ha'ilam. Did you ever see the Maram? Makshin Ha'ilam. So he says, the world asks. Which world asks? Here on Devon Avenue? Yeah, they don't ask the question there. So where's the world at? The world of the Maramas. He says, Mendel, that's the world you're supposed to be in. The other world, forget about it. Max, the world of Max, the, the world that asks these kashis, that's the world you're supposed to be existing in. That, that's your world. Oh, you, you, obviously, you, you know, I'm like, you know, fly around between worlds. It's really cool, you know, like E.T. But, but where's your base? Your base is there. That's what it means. So that's what he says. The shayvu ben very nice. Now what else? This is the Yisoyed. Uksha atem mispalim. Du'u lifne mi atem umdim. What does das mean? Das doesn't mean cerebral knowledge. What does it mean? Chachma, bina, and das. Chachma is cerebral knowledge. Basic knowledge. Bina is understanding. You took a kernel of an idea and you gave it, uh, you fleshed it out. You gave it uh, breadth, height, length, you made, okay, a kernel of a swore developed, nafkaminas, understood, hagdoros, you know, what, you got, what, what you're supposed to be doing in your learning activity. Taking an idea and conceptualizing it, broadening it out, and then saying what its parameters are through the different halachas, and finally through that, the capability of extrapolating further. So the bina is, is giving it space, taking a, a, almost like a mathematical point and giving it space, dimensions. You're, 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 that's called understanding. Okay, once you understand that, now once you understood the halacha, or understood the piece of Gemara, now you can internalize. Das means to connect to it. 
when we say there's also a concept of carnal knowledge. Adam es ishto. He knew his wife, which means he had carnal knowledge. There was a connection. It was a sexual connection. It's called carnal knowledge. The idea is internalized reality to become internalized knowledge. That's what I call emotional uh, intelligence. Okay, so cerebral intelligence. Cerebral intelligence runs between chachma and bina. Das is already emotional intelligence. Okay, so what does the Rebbe Blazer tell his children? It's not that have to have chachma. Yeah, shchina. Write it down. Da. That's uh, that, this is the source of what I taught you before. Barachova. Da. I said, look, who you're standing in front of. You have to know who you're standing in front of. And I honestly believe that each one has something else. It's impossible otherwise. There's no off the rack on this. There's no, there's no, you can't buy it in a supermarket. You have to create it. So da is name yatim aindim. Ubishvil kach tisku lechaya elamaba. So this is the first, this is the site that I taught you before. It's a super authority. thing. I'm going to show you a few other halachas just to see how this works. Look at um, source hey. Shulchanach says, also love, here I'm trying to show you, see this is called learning morals and ethics for, 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 from Gemara and Shulchanach, okay, the, <laughs> so it works. Shulchanach says, also love our keneged amispalim betoich arba amis. Don't want to go into the Allah of there's, there's certain people which they don't, if they, they, they dive along and they're like in the middle of the way, so there's quite a few Rishonim which point out then you don't have to worry about them. And if you dive along, you go in the corner, you don't bother anybody. Zunter, hey, do what you want. Also, lava. Vidavka lifneim, abit sadeim, mutur lava velamait. What's the reason? Dr. Mishnabura. Next, over there. Mipnesh and vatl kavanasai. Ayadeze. Which is honestly true. Uh, it's interesting how uh, people, I don't want to say about people that move next to you and like push you. <laughs> These shuls, all of a sudden you feel like, like the charge of the light brigade to the right of me, to the left of me, you get pushed all over the place. <laughs> now, now, without that, movement, if you're focused in thought, I mean, now what will you focus on? I don't mind people walking around, but if I'm trying to focus, I'm oimi lifne ashrina. It's not an easy thing to do. You have to be very focused. You need quiet. You know what I mean? That's why closed eyes does help. Okay? Okay? You have to go into a mind experience. Any movement around you, any banging door or anything, that will disturb that intensity. It's a meditative experience, for goodness sakes. It's not just, come on, no. <laughs> it, 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 to, get the, to, to conjure up that image... It's, a, it's heavy work. You have to be very trained to this. I told you before, shachris is a good tefillah. Meir of the Krishna helps. Mincha? I don't think I ever did it. Efshar and Yom Kippur. You know what I mean? When do I do a mincha? Like a real mincha, you know what I mean? It's not pushy. It's very hard. It's very hard. It's very hard. I mean, maybe, unless there's like, the way I understand it, the da, if they had to, I made a verbal Wish for the best at Mincha. You know what I mean? But so, so he said in the first, because it's a battle cover, and I said, it will hang a su a filo oisik as be queer schma. The Chai Odom says, at time of the Shemafsik, Bena mis palel, la shchina. That's frightening. What did the Chai Odom say, Pshat in that halacha? Because the shchi, the bed is now surrounded with the shchina. Even, to, even at the dins, it's also going even at the side. That means to say, what's the Chayyotim understand? Chayyotim understands, we have to find a source, that Makam Shal Adam is Daladamis, that's a Gemara of Metziah. The Pshat is, I'm with the Ashkina means he is enveloped in Shechina. His whole Makam is Shechina. His Daladamis, Lefana Vachayrav, it's Dadav, is Shechina. He's not just standing in front of, he's engulfed in. That's a totally different experience. That's what you feel maybe, maybe, maybe in the ila. Not just standing in the presence of. The pshat is he writes the first. If you walk into his daladamis, you're being chaitzes beinu lebeinu shchina. That means that the shchina is you're in this matzav of shchina, and there's a certain reality. And people going by the kreda chatzitza. That is a frightening reality. How vivid is this? This halacha of ayim lefnei shchina. Where did the Chayotim take it? How do you understand that Gemara? It's mamish, a vivid reality which has enough kaminis la'alacha. You're called a chaytzes b'fnei ashkina. Now this isn't like some verta left, some, you know, with the kugel and the chont and the tish. This is like halacha. 
That's the experience. That's called Dalit Nehemiah at Amispala. At the Mukif Bishkine, your whole, what, is, what, what does it mean by my Dalit Amis? What's up with Dalit Amis? Because that's my Mukim. Where am I? Man is defined by time and space. Not man, all of existence. The word is means is a phenomenon within time and space. So the halacha says, my space is called Dal Dams. When I say Oymid Bifne Ashkina means my makoim, my whole basic sense of existence, as much as I am with Shina. That's my space. Where am I? That's what you say, Aina Makoi Makoi, Aina Aina Oilam Makoi Mai, who Makoi Mai Shil Oilam. He's called Makoi, the name of God, because he's your space man. The space, which is the basis essence of your existence, because existence is a phenomenon bookended between time and space. The space which makes you is, is God, is Shechina. That's frightening, okay? And that, I'm just showing how tefillah, and just dinim in tefillah, really took tefillah, if it's done correctly, or at least wish the will to want to aspire to do it correctly, this takes learning, thinking, experiencing, it takes a long time. This is not, nothing happens in a day here. But this is where it's supposed to be. Let's look at another halacha. You say, I never understood. We have to learn Sifri Musr. You also have to learn is, is, is Gemar and Shulchan Aruch, and it's, 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 it's frightening what this halacha is. Look at another halacha. It's really frightening. Sif says in Shulchan Aruch and Kuv Gimel, Bikesh Lotz's men are ruach. He had a stomach problem, and there was some gas about to come out from the bottom, of the and it's star harbe. Like, he, he hurts, he can't hold it in. He's holding middle Shmaneser, for goodness sakes. He's Omidlifne Ashkina. You understand? You're not exactly going to let out a Bronx cheer when you're standing in front of the president. Lifne Ashkina, what are you doing here? So the din is Hoylech Achayev Arba Amis. You actually stop middle Shmaneser, walk back for Amis from where you are. Umaitsi Aruach. Umamtin Achi Kole Arech. You wait till the smell goes. And then you say, Voimeri, Boyna Elamim. Yitzartan in the cover in the cover, Chalum, Chalulim. You have created for us, obviously, different holes and different, different, different uh, conduits. You obviously know how ashamed we are. Yes, we're very ashamed in life, and we end up being nothing more than food for the worms and death. And you're saying, you know, this is, this is who I am. This is body, and we're frail and meaningless, and I'm really sorry here. And then he goes back to his place. And then you start, continue the Shemines from where you stop. Why do you have to be Chayz Lim Koyma? Okay, so once you walked away, what happens the din to be there? Why Chayz Lim Koyma? Mam Shri, Makin Shepasek, I understand. So Kedush is Makin. That's the Shaila. Why is there a lacha of Chayz Lim Koyma? Anybody learn brachas in this? Uh, you learn brachas? You read brachas. It's also nice. It's an important thing to learn brachas, to read brachas. Okay, but really, what's that din chayz lo Okay, zog the Beis Yosef. Look at the Beis Yosef. Beis Yosef, Sif Zion. Masha kotsu rabbeinu shi yicholi aruaya chayz lo mekaymai. Kotsu rabbeinu agol the mamri abu hav. That's mamash like a door before the Beis Yosef. The reason because you should go back to the place where you started. Why? There's a lot of makam yuchud letfila, and since you, that was your place of davening, that becomes a makam yuchud letfila. So you have to go back to that place. Okay. Now we should discuss why it's important to have a certain place for tefila. We'll talk about that some other time. is at the base so that's not true. Dafilu. There's definitely those reshining which understand that makam yuchat tefillah doesn't mean a certain place. It means go to a certain shul. You should be a member of a certain shul. You shouldn't go around steeple hopping. You should have a, a certain place, and that's where you're daven. And uh, it's once again nafkimina for, you know, certain people, that this culture of, you know, going here, there. No, 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 no. You should have a makam yuchad. You should have a place which is your shul. Okay, that's where you daven. Uh, hopefully, shul means davening. Uh, that's the, that's where you should daven. So he says. So it's, so this can't be the reason. This can't be the reason. I'm in the shul. So why have to be dafkin in this uh, this aisle? Of a low boy makam yuchad is spalo boy. You don't need a special chair. You don't need a special aisle. It should be the same building. 
Kamoshka Safti Basimim Psadik, and that's what the Mukhabar Pasan is Allah. So if that's the case, why over here do we say the Allah the Khazil and Makaima? So the Bay Shani Hacha, this is different. Shahid Khil Kvalit Palel, he had already started Davening, Ukvar Kavo Hashina Makom Sham. It's not just you experience or think Shina. If you experience and you think, God actually is there. And now that became a makam mashchina. That's the fight. That's the next step. Until now, we spoke about your awareness, about your about your 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 your, your, your internalizing ideals. <laughs> Here, there's the next side to the space Yosef, that God is there when people think about Him. The extent of God's presence in your life to the extent that you live with the consciousness of that presence. Your consciousness of that presence is which brings God into your life. And that's what the Bessie Yosef says. The Bessie Yosef says, Because there was a halacha that you said, and hopefully you did it. Uh, it would be for a guy which didn't do this anyway. The Tetsi doesn't go back because he was, there's nothing there. He's not davening Shemun Esrei. He's just saying words. So this doesn't apply to him. We're talking about a person which is davening Kedin. He's davening kidin because kavanas of nei is ma'akev. What's the Allah? He was with, if you thought about shchina and you experienced your mukif for shchina as we learned before, shchina is actually there. Do you have what you just said? If you want to be in dialogue with God, think about it. See it as vivid and real, and it is real. Not be, it's just not just a mind reality. It's not just you internalizing a value. The person who lives with internalized value actually creates a, for a, a relationship. That's Mufusha Rambam and Ramban that we learned this a couple of times. Where the Rambam writes in Marinavuchim and the Ramban quotes it in Iyav Lamed Vav, Perik Zion, that to the extent that a person is Davek Bishchina in his mind, that's the extent of Ashgach protest that he has. Kor Vashem Lechol, Kor He's not talking about John, Dick, and Harry. It's the person which mamish davens with lifnei hashchina. Okay? The, the Ram, Ramban writes that a person who lives with consistent God awareness is nitzel min amikrim. God really protects him from many haphazard realities. Most people don't live that way. And that's why they really have to do a lot of ishtadlis and gashmias because at the end of the day, we're nitan lamikrim. Haphazard realities incur to us. If you walk under a, uh, a, a, a wall which is about to fall, no one's going to protect you from it, and you didn't get punished. You just are an idiot and not taking care of yourself. I remember this, we discussed this. You didn't uh, open up your ways, and therefore you got stuck in a traffic jam. Don't blame God. Blame you're an idiot. You have the phone. Open it. Use it. Okay? Get stuck on the belt. Thank you. Try listening to the news, okay, before you do it. Blame yourself. But if you're a person which is David Bashkina, God will like make manipulate reality that you will not be affected by that. That's a Ramban in Iyo Vlamid Vav Perik Zion. We discussed this one. And the Pasuk Lo Yosir Mea Tzadik Einav. It's a mitzvah in the Torah, ladavka by the Ramban says, what's the mitzvah? To do your best to be davek b'shchinim, means live with, a, with acute God awareness. Now, no one says you can do it 24-7, but it's supposed to be on your radar screen, on your agenda, and it can realize itself in tefillah. Tefillah is the great laboratory of your efforts, your religious efforts to come to some kind of fruition by a certain sense of really standing in front of God. What you're doing is drawing more hashgacha pratis to you. He's actually there. Korav Hashem l'chol korav. He's actually close to you if you really call him be'emes. If you really daven with the hashchina, he's actually there. Dashtet de beis yosef, zok de beis yosef, davar mufla. For kav hashchina makin sham, v'kish b'kish lis atesh nisrachek mi makam shchina. Now you walked away from the makam shchina. V'lochach tzarchu lachzul a makam shekav al shchina. For the same shama tefila, of course, of course, Oymer lifne Ashkena, he's there. He's going to walk further away. Is that shaykh? Doctor Bukhaber Mufurish, this is the halacha with the kavan of Oymer lifne tefila creates a repair. Kar v'Hashem l'chol kairav, he's actually there. L'chol shekru b'emes. This is this b'siyosef. 
All this is davening. Could you imagine davening this way? I said, but I said that davening is an unbelievable exercise in internalizing, an exercise of God awareness. Yeah, it's called davening. So another Allah, which is all, which is really frightening. The Gemara says, Navhei and Brachas. Tanya, Abba bin Yamin Oimer. Shnaim shenichnasu li ispalo. This is, happens quite often. Vikadam echnem li ispalo v'lo hintim es He didn't wait for me, he left. No, Mishael and Rishonim of what happened here. Men and Rishonim say, because we're talking about, they used to daven in the fields. You left him alone at night. It's wrong. You know, people should walk together, and that's why you say Ashkivenu. That's why you say all these, those psukim after Shemram Yisrael Ad and the Chutzlars, to keep people around, they should uh, walk away together. That, you know that, right? So here he says, Tarflet Filas Befanov. We tear up his prayers. Shenemer Taref Nafshe Be'apai Halamancha Tezev Oritz. You, you, you move God away from its place. Not Rashi. Rashi is shocked in this. Rashi is shocked in this. Rashi is in this. Rashi say shocked in this. Not talking about my roof. Pshat is, don't you understand when your friend, you dominate with your friend, the Shekhin is there now. How could you walk out? How could you, you think you're going to walk out, the Shekhin's going out with you? No. The Shekhin is there. How could you walk out? It's a big chumr, this Rashi. Most Rishonim don't learn Pshat this way. I'm saying it the way it is. That you'd all be stuck in the, uh, until the last one of your davens, brother dear. That would be a problem, wouldn't it? You wouldn't get lunch. But at the end of the day, I'm not joking. You say, you're lucky we don't post in this Rashi. Oh, but the Yisoyed is there. The Yisoyed is, the Pshat is, he doesn't learn that it's my river, you're endangering the person from having to walk in the fields alone. Says, it's Maka Mashchina. And the Shechina is there. It's a, how can you walk away? You travel so far to go to a caver of a Rebbe, right? You go to Hebron for Shabbos, or you go to a cave of Rochel. Ich verstehe nicht. Ayi daven tetz ashras ashchina. And you're walking away? Say another capital till him while you're at it. Start asking. He's not, he's, 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 he's in Gelevelt and Shechina. There is him, it's of Shechina there. Why do you go to the Kaiso? Why do you go to all these places? Because these are makam which are makam of Ashras Nashchina. It's a ran in the drushes. Why do you go to a grave of a tzaddik? Because that body was a tool of bringing Kiddush, of, of Kiddush Hashem in the world. His mitzvahs created more godliness in the world. So his body is, is like a lightning rod to bring more godliness into the world. So it's a great place for Ashras Nashchina. That's why you don't dive into a dead man. That's how the Zorah. You dive into the God which was expressed in his life and you want to connect to it. Yeah. He's like a lightning rod to bring that energy into your life. You go to Hebron. It's a place where the other Sa'ilam were, 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 are buried. It's whatever God was expressed in their ex life, that's what you're connecting to there. It's a great place to meet him. That's all these places are. You don't pray to dead people. That's Avodah Zorah. Okay, you pray to God, which was expressed in the life of these people. Okay, don't you understand? Everybody that davens, it's your shechina, which you have brought down. Remember, we discussed the shechina is your shechina, brother dear. Why can you? Why are you walking away? Until his shechina is here. Wouldn't you want to connect to that? Wouldn't you want to? But I mean, it's like daven more if they are shechina. You have to go to Uman. What for? It's unbelievable, this halacha. It's, um, it's a Rashi. This is not like a you know, voodoo book. It's good old-fashioned Rashi, okay? I, it's enough. It's late already, but I would like to continue, so we'll continue next week more. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about um, the extent of, uh, uh, of God dealing with you to the extent that you, uh, you understand him. The understanding of man... I, I just want to tell you one thing, just to get this how it works. The marshal. There's a book called the Munabitachna of the Ramban. 
And he writes over there, what's the Isser of calling out God's name in vain? It says, every time you call out the name of God, it means you, you're, you're calling him a name, you understand it, you're Ma'ira his midah. You awaken him into action. Why are you waking him up? You don't really need it. You say, you're calling God, you know, Kael, you know what I mean? Kael means the God of, of, of Chesed. You don't need it at the moment. Why are you just like, ringing a bell for him to wake up? He's got other things to do. You're evoking a Midah, which at the moment is not necessary. It's a terrible zilzil in the Melech. Well, you call, you, you, it's like you're pushing him the whole time to do things. I don't really need this. just want to see what you, how you react, you know what I mean? That's the, that's the, you say to the issue, I'm so trying to say something, calling out God's name, and the more you call it with, the, with, the, with your uh, gestalt, with your understanding, the deeper you're calling out your mamish mo'ayra midas of a kaddish You don't have to ask anything. Just call out his name and understand it. That's what's frightening. You say that in davening in Rosh Hashanah. I just want you to remember that. What do you say there? Kemoshi adanu shashotan lefanecha. Oh, we know. Well, it's nice that you know, you idiot. Who cares what you know? No, because it's to the extent that I know that's why you're activated. The idea of the Adam is Mechaev, so that's, I'm trying to push here for learning and understanding what we're doing. The more we understand God, the more we activate him, the more he's there, and that is Shechina that we discussed before. Da Lifnei Have a great night. We'll continue this next week.